everyone and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is all things Bravo, we're talking about Mauricio and Kyle's divorce. It's getting weird, desperate, thirsty, and creepy. We are uncovering, and I cannot believe I did not find this out before, but if you didn't believe that Morgan and Kyle's relationship was fake, you are definitely going to believe it after this episode, okay? And then also Andy Cohen responds to Brandy Glanville's sexual misconduct lawsuit against him. He says it's a joke. She says it was harassment. We'll get into it. I'll share my thoughts. And Sandoval wanting $90,000 from Ariana before he moves out of the house. Who's in the wrong and who's in the right? So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. And also don't forget to shop our Soft Girl collection. We have t-shirts, hoodies, joggers, all of it. So definitely click down below and check out our collection and treat yourself. So with that, let's go. So first up, Andy Cohen responds to Brandy Glanville's accusation of sexual harassment, saying, quote, she was in on the joke. So this is from The Hollywood Reporter. It says Andy Cohen responded to Brandy Glanville's claim of sexual harassment, saying the Real Housewives star was in on the joke, but that he was sorry for the inappropriate situation. In a letter sent to NBC Universal, Warner Brothers, and Shed Media on Thursday, obtained by The Hollywood Reporter, Glanville's attorneys wrote that Cohen sent her a video in 2022 in which he appeared obviously inebriated. The letter explains that Cohen reportedly boasted that he wanted to sleep with another Bravo star while thinking about Glanville, inviting her to watch him engage in the sexual act over FaceTime. Mr. Cohen was Mrs. Glanville's boss at the time and exercised complete and total control over her career, the letter reads. This was an extraordinary abuse of power that left Miss Glanville feeling trapped and disgusted. In a statement posted to X, formerly known as Twitter, later on Thursday, Cohen wrote that the video in question shows Kate Chastain and I very clearly joking to Brandy. It was absolutely meant in jest, and Brandy's response clearly communicated she was in on the joke, Cohen finished his his statement with an apology. That said, it was totally inappropriate, and I apologize. In the letter, Glanville's attorneys wrote that the incident is far from the first time Ms. Glanville has been used in a bruise by NBC, Bravo, Warner Brothers, and Shed Media. Indeed, Ms. Glanville has long been taken advantage of by the institutions with which she is indebitably tied personally, professionally, financially, and in the public mind. Her story, one of thousands we have heard in the course of our investigation into the practices of the reality television industry, is part and parcel for the reality reckoning. Representatives for Warner Brothers did not provide a comment to The Hollywood Reporter. NBC, Universal, and Gen Media did not immediately respond. All right. It says, Glanville's accusations against Cohen come on the heels of a lawsuit filed against her by fellow Bravo star Caroline Manzo, who alleged that she was sexually abused and harassed by Glanville during the upcoming season of The Real Housewives Girls' Ultimate Trip. The suit filed in January claims that Glanville kissed, groped, and grabbed and forcibly fondled Manzo's lady parts and breasts, and Manzo alleged that the producers were listening to the interaction on audio, but never opened the door or took any other action to intervene and stop the S.A., Okay, so that is basically the gist of what happened. Girl, 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 girl. Brandy, no. Brandy, no. Brandy, no. This is the thing, Brandy. And this is the problem, right? Because when people who honestly don't really care, like I don't think that Brandy cared. I don't think she was offended. I don't think she felt violated that Andy Cohen was sending her, you know, this FaceTime video when he was with Kate Chastain, who either was or still is Brandy's good friend. They were really good friends on Trader season one. They were also supposed to do the Peacock show together that Kate has. Kate now does it with Captain Lee or something because Brandy got in trouble with the whole Morocco thing. All of her Peacock, NBC, Bravo deals kind of went out the wayside with that. So she knows Kate, they're friends. And this is the problem that I have. 
when real people, and I don't, and I'm not saying Brandy isn't a real person, but I don't think for one second she actually felt violated or harassed by Andy Cohen in any way, shape, and or form. But so when real people suffer from sexual harassment or, you know, inappropriateness or they feel coerced or uncomfortable at work, it makes it so much harder. It's like when we talk about anything where it's like real abuse going on, real racism or real homophobia or real ageism or real body shaming or anything that really real happens when these quote celebrities cry woof because they don't like the deal that they got. They don't like that they're no longer in favor. They don't like the fact that they're no longer on TV and cashing checks. Now, all of a sudden, she wants to act like she's sexually harassed by Andy Cohen. Brandy, knock it off. Knock it off. You had no problem with Andy as long as you were being cast and stuff. Knock it off. All the way off. But I'm going to tell you who is even the bigger, in my personal opinion, the bigger uh, problematic entity in this situation. So once Brandy sued Andy Cohen for in, in via Andy Cohen and BC and Bravo for this whole sexual harassment thing with the FaceTime video, which to me is a bunch of nonsense and is disgusting because it dilutes from when real people have to fight these types of things. And it's like, well, why didn't you why, well, why didn't you tell your boss no? Well, why didn't you leave? Well, you got a raise that year, so it couldn't be that bad. You know what I mean? It makes it harder for when real people deal with this crap to be believed and to come forward because of crap like this. But the real evil, the real villains is Bravo, NBC, Peacock, whatever the power is that be. Because if you guys noticed... I'm not going to say the content creators' names because that's not my place. I don't do that. I don't talk, I don't speak against other content creators. But I will say this if you ever notice when there is a particular narrative that Bravo and Bravo favorites want to get out, you see the same exact platforms regurgitating the same exact narrative. And it's, I don't know if they're paid by Bravo. I don't, I don't know if they get comped BravoCon tickets. I don't know. Not my business. I don't care. But what I did notice was that all of a sudden, these content creators who usually have a very in-sync narrative when it comes to Bravo and their favorites started posting negative things about Brandy. Like, oh, Brandy, well, what happened when you slapped LVP? Oh, br like, what if LVP would have, like, you know, pressed charges? What about when you threw wine on um, Eileen? You know, what about blah, 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 blah? What about da, 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 and you drinking in this? All of a sudden, it was this, in my personal opinion, very obvious Bravo PR push to malign Brandy. And the reason why I think that is so evil of them, it's because, well, then why did you keep hiring her? So now, because you want to dismiss her, you want to discredit her because she's suing you. Now, all of a sudden, you want to do this little PR push talking about how violent she is and how sexually inappropriate she is and how dangerous she is. But you knew this the entire time, but yet you kept hiring her. To me, that was the biggest takeaway of the whole situation. Because Andy Cohen, Andy Cohen is Andy Cohen. He's going to do what he's going to do. He has his favorites. He's going to drink. He's going to party. He's going to do whatever. Andy Cohen is going to do Andy. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's how executives should move. But Andy's going to do Andy. And Brandy was doing Brandy until Caroline sued. And Ultimate Girls Trip Morocco had to be put on pause. And so then, therefore, Brandy got canceled and back and blackballed by the network. So now the only reason why Brandy is having such an issue with Andy is because her bag is gone. Not because she felt sexually harassed by Andy Cohen. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that I'm not discrediting her feelings. I'm just saying what, what I personally think. But to me, the biggest gag is that now all of a sudden Bravo's trying to do this PR push of how horrible and violent Brandy is, but yet you continue to 
hired this woman year after year and project after project. She had projects coming up that got canceled because of everything that she did. So the real villain is Bravo and NBC and all those executives because you knew this woman was problematic. You knew she had issues with drinking and, and, and pills and all that stuff. I'm not putting that on her. This is what she has said herself. You know, you knew she had this stuff. You knew she had a history of being violent. You knew she had a history of being sexually um, inappropriate with herself and with others, but yet you continue to hire her. That's why she was even in the position to allegedly sexually assault Carolyn Manzo because you hired her. So now you're telling on yourself and your slip is showing. And miss me with the PR campaign because it's so obvious. Open, like watch, just watch. When certain things happen at Bravo and certain favorites, you will see certain, there will be a certain narrative that is put out there and that's pushed, you know? So for me, that's kind of where I land on this, where it's super, super cringe. It's not that I have, it's not that I have Andy Cohen's back. I just, it feels very, Brandy feels very like meany to me in this situation. When you fall out of favor, when your bag is gone, then you want to sue. Then you want to talk about you know, discrimination and this, that, and the third, but you had no problem being a part of the problem as long as you benefited from the situation. You know, so that's kind of where I land on that um, when it comes to them. But let me know what you guys think, you know. You know, do you think, no, Brandy has the right to sue for sexual harassment? You know, it's inappropriate to do that and all that stuff. And this stuff, unfortunately, doesn't just happen in entertainment industries. You have it in any industry, you know. People talk about the office party. Somebody got wasted and did this and did that and sending all that stuff. Thankfully, now it's less because there's more repercussions for it and people are believed more. But it's it's bad. And Andy Cohen should not be treating his employees this way because he is in a position of power. So to me, two things can be true. Do I think Brandy felt violated? No. But do I think what Andy Cohen did was inappropriate? Yes. You see what I'm saying? And look what she did to, to well, look what she did to Denise. Look how she did that. It's just missed me with this whole thing, Brandy. But to me, the most biggest telling part of and Brandy's lawyers are the same lawyers that are Bethany Frankel's lawyers for the whole reality reckoning thing. So this is the same legal team that was suing Bravo and NBC and all of them back with the whole reality reckoning, let's get a union, Rachel and all that stuff. So this is that same legal team talking about that. But to me, the biggest telling thing was that, oh, so Bravo, NBC executives, Peacock, you knew how violent this woman was and you still hired her. And now you want to malign her because she's no longer being your puppet. Because she no longer can make you money. See what I'm saying? So put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I think Brandy is also kind of like her own worst enemy. She's had a lot of opportunities. And it is what it is. And then I also have a question for you guys. Where do you land when it comes to, to Brandy being like, well, no, in Morocco, Ultimate Girls Trip, I just did what was expected of me. They expected me to be crazy and out of pocket. They expected me to drink too much to drink too much, and all of that. I was just doing my job. Or do you think, no, you crossed the line. You're an adult. Stop it. I land on this. In a court of law, you can't go to the judge if you stole from someone, if you hurt someone, if you assaulted someone, if you, you know, did something crazy and say, judge, let me go because my boss told me to do it. That doesn't fly. You still did it and you still need to suffer the consequences of it. Now, there are a lot of theories going around about why Caroline really is suing that kind of Brandy might be a little bit of a scapegoat red herring for her. All of that stuff, I don't know. It's a little dark. I don't want to go that deep, but I want to know what you guys think. So put it down below. Where do you land with Andy versus Brandy? And before you do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share.